Hi everybody, welcome to Facebook Live uh, today on a another sunny uh, baking London Costa del Sol stroke London um, day when this fantastic summer continues. Looking forward to seeing you all on Wednesday um, at the fourth anniversary evening. And today I'm going to be talking about families at war. We all have families. Uh, not all of them are at war. Uh, I think for, for most of us, the idea of having uh, a dispute within the family is unthinkable. We uh, all have differences of opinion, of course, but for most of us, when, when these arise, we talk, we meet, we discuss, and we resolve it and we move on. What I'm going to be talking about is families who, for whatever reason, uh, are not able to deal with their disputes in that way. So um, I'm thinking of disputes which happen over wills, over trusts, over probate, over property, over money, over money, and most of all over money um, we we all know that money is uh, the root of all evil but uh, sadly um, when it comes to families and where the emotion the pride the ego and the principle um, kick in it, it somehow seems to freeze people uh, in in that situation so um, you know sadly the, the root cause of uh, a, a lot of family disputes goes back many years to childhood. Um, you know, maybe one uh, one sibling used to bully the other. Maybe uh, the one parent used to bully um, one of the children. Uh, but when it comes to f finding a resolution to these problems, uh, certain certain families are stuck and are not able to sort it out themselves. So I guess by definition, once the, the problem comes to me, they, they are in a situation where they're stuck. Um, they may or may not have had legal advice. Sometimes if they've had legal advice um, and um, e each side has had legal advice, what that means um, in practical terms is that they've each taken a position and once you've taken a position, it, it's harder, much, much, much harder to back off from that position without, without um, loss of face, uh, going back on a principle. Um, and so where uh, mediation comes into this scenario is that a neutral person uh, can often help to take the, uh, the, the sting, um, some of the emotion out of the situation and enable the parties to negotiate uh, through the mediator, through, through the, uh, the neutral facilitator, uh, in a way that can preserve face, can pre pre preserve uh, one's principles and find a solution with with the mediator's help that each each of the parties can live with and this is one of the keys to uh, the way a mediation works is that that it's not about winning or losing it's not about um beating the other party the um, the key is in f helping the parties to find a solution to a problem which which they can all live with and then can move on with their lives and in many situations although it's not always they don't always set out to, to do it this way in many situations they they are able to start a reconciliation process within the family uh, now some some of the families i've dealt with in dispute uh, have no wish whatsoever to, to talk to the other uh, the other side uh, which is unfortunate and it's sad but i think one has to accept that if that's the way each of the parties are approaching the situation, then um, you, you have to uh, 
at least understand that that's where they're coming from. It, it doesn't mean um, always that, that that will still be the situation at the end. It doesn't mean that after the dust has settled, they may, you know, they may be able to pick up the pieces and look at trying to uh, at least have a, a neutral relationship going forward. Uh, but nevertheless, one one has to respect the uh, the wishes of the party coming into the the dispute um, resolution. So typically, um, in in a in a mediation of this sort, the the parties will um, either have been advised by their solicitors that it, it's a good time to to mediate. Um, either because it, it would be the first step before issuing proceedings, which is always um, not only sensible, but also um, as part of the pre-action protocol, before you issue proceedings, uh, you have to be able to say that you have tried um, ADR, which is alternative dispute resolution, which is typically mediation. So it's either it's either at that stage before proceedings have been issued, or proceedings have been issued, and they're at a stage in the the litigation where they've had a number of hearings um, with the court, and before they are preparing to um, get ready to, to for for a trial, the uh, judge will commonly say to them will give you three months and um, stay of the proceedings to go away and and find uh, a solution. Uh, that's that's almost code as far as the, the courts are concerned for saying, please don't waste our time, because a lot of a lot of these cases don't need to be in front of the court. Uh, the courts are hugely overloaded, and they certainly don't need to be um, dealing with cases that could quite easily be settled by mediation. So um, having set the scene for uh, how parties would be coming to mediation, when they actually do come to mediation, um, typically I find that the parties are so emotionally um, uh, in, in engaged in the situation and, and, and things are so sensitive that they won't sit in the same room as the other party. Now that's Again, that's that's unfortunate, but you have to work within that um, uh, those parameters if if you're going to to help them to uh, find a resolution. So what what happens in those situations is that we we sit people um, in separate rooms, and they will uh, stay in those rooms usually, uh, and I will shuttle. Uh, between both rooms so i i won't be uh, merely a messenger but i will be talking to both sides hearing what they have to say in in terms of their their proposals for resolving the dispute and uh, passing on with uh, with their authority if they give it to me proposals to to the other side uh, and so the shuttling process can can go on all day uh, what, I, what I often find with, with families in dispute is that because the emotion is, is often so high, people come to the mediation um, with fixed ideas about how it should be settled. Um, and by that I mean that people are looking for a, uh, a solution to reflect what they want, um, not what the the other party would want. And um, I obviously encourage parties to, to put themselves in the other party's shoes. And when people are put in that position, it's amazing how, how difficult they actually find We, we all know what we want. We want it and we want it now. But if you're going to 
find a mediated solution and not and not a court imposed solution uh, a mediated solution involves um, stepping outside your own needs to the extent that you can accommodate the other party's needs as well so um, if, if I if I'm negotiating um, as a as a family member to to try and find a, a resolution to this problem if if I don't stretch myself uh, beyond what I would be comfortable with uh, uh, accepting then the the other family member is going to take a similar view and um, and so by contrast if if I if I do uh, go beyond my comfort zone the chances are that the other family member will, will do the same uh, it's not um, it's not magic it's 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 human nature yeah we 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 all respect somebody who is prepared to uh, to put themselves out to go further than they might otherwise go um, but we're certainly not going to have respect for somebody who just sticks to their guns and 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 is only looking to maintain their own position so um it it, it requires in some cases a, a a leap of faith uh, and some people are able to do that and and some are not those who are not uh don't get don't get solutions so you you have you have to think um when you come to mediation, uh, particularly as a as a member of a family, um, what what you're actually looking for in the long run? Do you want to spend um, possibly the rest of your life uh, with you're not speaking to uh, your parents, your siblings? Um, is that is that good? Is that um, is that right? Is it right for you? Um, but how does it reflect on them? What what would they think? What would they want? Uh, the, these are all really difficult, really difficult questions, um, and it, it's uh, it's magnified more in a, in a family context because you know if we're if we're talking about fighting over a a, a will, um, the will of, of the uh, the person who's passed away may be crystal clear what they expect to go to A, B, and C. But A and B might find that acceptable, and C might not. And C has got to ask themselves, what, how, how does that reflect on me because the will was prepared in this way? Um, you know, why why did they leave me they leave me out of the world uh, and 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 if they if as they did um they they chose not not to give me anything at all um how 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 can i uh live live with myself if i try and overturn those wishes so um the 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 role of, of emotion and an ego and principle can't can't be um, stated too highly. It, it's it's uh, it's often the difference between there being a, a dispute or there being no dispute at all. Um, the, the 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 property, the money, um, the fine the finite assets. Um, are all limited they can be shared in in any number of, of ways but what we what we can't account for is is the emotion and the ego and the pride and the principle and that's why um, mediation is 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 so important because it 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 helps parties um, to see things in a in a, a less highly charged emotive way um, because they they know that the mediator has has no axe to grind um, 
and has uh, no vested interest in the outcome and and that's that's absolutely fundamental because if you as, as separate parties um if you can trust the mediator because he or she is independent and he or she um, has no interest in the outcome then you get to understand that it doesn't uh it, it's 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 not fundamental to the to the mediator whether the matter settles. Uh, obviously, it's much more preferable if it can do, but it, it, if it doesn't settle, then it's still the dispute of the parties. They still have to live with it, own it, and deal with it. Um, and the power and the and the the value of being able to settle a dispute um, and put it behind you and move on with your lives is immeasurable. Um, but similarly, the the, the power of, of uh, the uh, the dispute that continues, the dispute that that can't be resolved, apparently, uh, of course. The dispute can be resolved because it's within the party's power to to do that and, and the mediator will do all that they can to try and assist that um but i have sat sadly been involved in in uh, many disputes where they they the parties um in, in, independently um individually on on you know for their own free will have decided um that they can't settle it that they don't want to settle it um and that's the state of, of of life that they wish to to continue with well that that's you know, that that's their choice uh, and that's uh you know that's for them but um it, it, in terms of what the mediator can do uh, we don't we don't have a magic wand we uh, we can make uh, suggestions we can encourage looking at things in a different way we can ask many um, open questions in order to try and um, get to, to the root of what the problem is and then try and um, help cajole steer encourage nudge um, but but not taking away the responsibility of the parties themselves uh, to come up with the resolution so um, it, it, it's a yeah it's, it's, a, it's a very a very complicated area um, which in my experience as a, a solicitor of many years um, but on the non-contentious side I, uh, I I don't I don't understand the the litigation mindset um, i have worked with many litigators i continue to work with many litigators um, but my my way of approaching uh, a resolution to a dispute is is a collaborative approach uh, and that's formed from being a, a solicitor for many years working uh, with people who we encourage to get around the table and, and, and resolve the, the deal. And in, in these cases, uh, property deals. But I think the same, the same principle should apply to uh, resolving family disputes. The, the sooner that the parties can either get around the table or get in the same building um, with the mediator's assistance, the sooner that they can do that, the sooner you can start the um, the resolution process, and I I talk a lot about um, nipping disputes in the bud. If if only people would stand back earlier and say, "Look, we've got a situation here which is it is not great. It's going to get worse um, if we don't." nip it in the bud um 
that would be wonderful from everyone's point of view. Um, yeah, we would have less um, litigation. Um, litigation, um, as we all know, is expensive. It's time consuming, it's stressful, it's uncertain. And ultimately, you have, as a participant, you have no control over the outcome. You can put your best case forward and hope that you can persuade a judge that, that, that you're right and the other party is wrong. Uh, and that is contrast, contrasted with the mediation um, uh, process and a solution where you, you are all working uh, collaboratively together with, with each uh, client's interests uh, in mind and, and, and heart in, in promoting their, their side of the case. But you are working to find a solution um, that, that everybody can live with. And so in a mediated solution, you know that you will get something. You won't, you won't come away, or you shouldn't come away completely empty-handed because the, 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 the best solution in a mediation is, in my view, where each party is equally unhappy. And when you're equally unhappy, uh, paradoxically, you're both um, happy uh, to, 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 to walk away with your pride intact and to be able to say you you achieved a settlement um, and the the added um, uh, benefit in in that situation is that that in, in a family uh, environment you are able uh, to at least have prepared the, the groundwork to uh, work on a reconciliation if if you wish to do so because the other the other party won't feel that they've had their noses rubbed in it. So it would be good uh, if anybody has any questions uh, to type them in. Um, I'm more than happy to to answer anything either whilst we're live or or, or after afterwards. But uh, please please feel free to raise anything with me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I accept that a, 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 a family can often work very well until uh, there, there's a will to, to be dealt with. Uh, and then it's it's a test that some families don't meet, and they uh, they they fall out over it. Um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's not always clear why why that is the case because it can be something that can go back uh, to childhood or to to a you know, a particular incident in the family. Um, but nevertheless, the the principle is that if things are not as parties would like them to be. It's a question of how you approach it, because you know the, he the healthy family will 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 approach it constructively uh, and and in a fair way. The 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 unhealthy part uh, family won't, and in some cases you you just don't find that out until you until you have the issue over the over the will or a property, whatever it might be. So any. Any questions that you would like me to address? Okay, well, if there aren't any questions, then um, I will wrap up. It's been very enjoyable speaking to you. Uh, I look forward to seeing as many of you as possible on, on Wednesday. And uh, if you do have any questions that arise after, after this, uh, then please message me uh, directly. <laughs>